In honor of the second anniversary of Betty's passing, I thought we'd talk a little bit about the clitoris and the variation that we can see in the vulva. It's just fascinating, Carolyn. Every time I do a genital show and tell, I am just amazed at, at how no two vulvas are alike. The last genital show and tell Betty and I did together, and we didn't know it at the time. It was the last uh, there was a vulva with a mix of colors and features Betty had never seen before. And she did this for the better part of 50 years. And the whole point is that whatever you're born with, it's enough. You can mm -hmm. achieve that orgasm. There is nothing that can impede or block your orgasm anatomically. Yes. So yeah. most often the clitoris peeks out from the clitoral hood. So the clitoral hood is that little piece of skin that kind of wraps itself around the clitoral gland. And it kind of has that long lily shape, but it can be very short too. Most often it peeks out. Sometimes it's completely covered. Mm -hmm. yes. right? Have you yeah. seen the hooded clitoris? I have. I've totally seen the hooded clitoris and the clitoris is just kind of like deep inside you know, like, like a hoodie, like a, literally like a hoodie that's pulled down completely over the clitoral glands. Doesn't affect orgasm at all. Right. Sometimes we see very small clitoris with almost no sh clitoral shaft and no hood. It's, you can't see it visibly. And they call those embedded clitorises. Again, <laughs> you can still orgasm. It's just a different style. So the clitoris is very tight to the body. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the outer labia are a little puffy, so we really can't see. To connect to that visual of your clitoris, you're going to have to get a mirror, do some vulva massage with oil, and look. Because as you're aroused, the clitoris will come out. It's it's truly amazing. You know, it's just like some vulvas have to be warmed up a little bit. Some clitorises have to be warmed up a little bit in order to be able to pop out so that way you can see them. <laughs> As we touch and we get aroused, things change. Colors deepen. Clits pop out a little bit more. The vagina secretes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the vagina kind of opens up a little more. Everything kind of loosens. Mm -hmm. And puffs up, just mm -hmm. like a flower blooming. Absolutely. So the outer labia can be different colors. I've seen them where they have a charcoal brown, almost a black, a brown, Sometimes they're pink or crimson red. Mm -hmm. um, then the colors can change as you touch, but even at the vaginal opening, it can look just like a smooth hole. Yes. Most often it has that inner rosebud. It has all of these folds at the opening that are pink. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it has some of those little hymenal tags. Mm -hmm. yes. Completely average. And while we're here, Carlin, let's talk about the hymen and some of the myths around the hymen. You know, the hymen is that thin membrane that covers the vagina when we're born as baby girls. And for 99.9% .9 of us, it's going to break open naturally if we play sports, if we ride a bike, or when we get our period. Mm -hmm. Yes. And hormones cause that thin membrane to thin even more. So... By the time, the, the first time that you have intercourse, the hymen really isn't intact anymore at all. It couldn't be. No, uh, exactly. You couldn't be bleeding or penetrated. And the hymen isn't always just 100% blocking your own vaginal opening. It can be, have little holes in it. It can pull to one side. So there's variations, just like in every other aspect of our anatomy. Mm-hmm. And it's a and myth it, that an intact hymen is a sign of virginity. Virginity is a construct. Um, if if you have orgasmed through masturbation, you are no longer a virgin. Absolutely. And most of us bleed the first time from lack of sexual arousal. So the anatomy has a variation and a range. There is nothing that can block your pleasure. Mm -hmm. The style vulva that we have sometimes can lead us to the types of stimulation we prefer, mm -hmm. right? So if you have a smaller embedded clitoris, you might like a vibrator more, you might like more pressure, but maybe not. If you have a large clitoris with a long clitoral hood, you're going to like that wishbone. 
Because <laughs> yeah. as you're going like this, you can do it even with two hands. When you're going in between your inner and outer labia, you're pulling, you have something to stroke. So it's all wonderful. Yes. And that's why there really is no one magic process to bring women to orgasm. Our anatomy is different. We have different ways that we like to be stimulated. Um, and it doesn't matter. It's not like a bigger clit orgasms faster than a smaller clit. It's all the same 8,000 nerve endings. Um, and it doesn't matter what style of vulva you have. Uh, it's really a matter of practice, um, getting to know your anatomy and how you like to be touched. Uh, that makes the difference in in orgasm. It's it's play, it's experience, it's practice. It's fun. Yes. So in honor of Betty Dodson's second year anniversary, take some time, explore your body, stroke your vulva, and have an orgasm. Mm -hmm. It's the perfect way to remember her. Mm -hmm.